Hello, this is a Force Actor tutorial for the May 2011 release of UDK. My name is Barrett Hudson. I'm a student at the Guildhall in Cohort 16. Today is June 4th, 2011. Now, to do this tutorial, you'll need to have a K actor placed in your play space. Um, I've got this barrel here that I made in an earlier tutorial. If you need help creating a K actor, you can see my basic physics tutorial and we'll walk you through how to create. Uh, the barrel that we're going to use in today's tutorial. So to get started with a force actor, we need to go to our content browser, go up here and click on the Unreal icon, and we want to navigate to the Actor Classes tab here at the top. And under Actor Classes, we want to expand the Physics Actor class. And the Actor class that we're going to use today is this RB Cylindrical Force Actor. So with that selected, we can right click in our play space and we can go ahead and add RB Cylindrical Force Actor here. And we'll see this little uh, green icon pop in. It's blue if you don't have it selected. And with it selected, you'll also see a volume around it that shows the edges of our Force Actor. So with that in the world, we can close out of our content browser and We'll go ahead and hit F4 and bring up the uh, properties window for our cylindrical force actor. And it maybe look like that, just expand the RB cylindrical force actor tab. And you can see these are all the parameters that control how our force actor behaves. And so we'll go ahead and set these up so that we can create a nice uh, tornado effect that will kind of pick up and throw our barrel around. So. Radial strength is the first parameter we're concerned with, and uh, the radial strength is the strength of the force that applies along the radius of our f cylindrical force actor. So that's basically, if you think about it, is either pushing out from the center or pulling in towards the center of our cylinder. And since we want a tornado, we want it to be pulling in towards the center, which means we need to use a negative value. So go ahead and set this to a radial strength of negative 2000. Uh, the next thing we see is our rotational strength. This force uh, pushes things around the center, uh, basically tries to make things travel in a circle or orbit the center of our force actor here. And so for this we will go ahead and uh, use a strength of 250 and we'll note um, Positive numbers will make things rotate in the counterclockwise direction, and negative numbers will make them rotate clockwise. So we don't really care which way it rotates, and we'll just leave it at 250. Next we see lift strength. This is the uh, force that is applied along the long axis of our force actor cylinder. Basically, for us, it will be a lift actor. You could turn this, in which case it would be propelling things forward or upwards at an angle or you could even flip it over and make this push down or if you want it to be to pull things down to the earth instead of push them into the air you could also just set it to a negative number but we want it to behave like a tornado so we want things picked up and we will go ahead and set this to 200 uh, the next parameter we have is our lift fall off height uh, this controls when the lift strength begins to fall off uh, and it is represented as a percentage of the total height of our force actor. So it takes values ranging from 0 to 1, 0 being uh, the very bottom, basically the lift strength begins to fall off in a linear fashion from the very bottom of your force actor and 1 being the very top, essentially meaning there is no fall off. Um, we'll go ahead and set this to 0.2, uh, which is, roughly equates to 20% up, up the uh, sides of our force actor is where our lift strength will start to diminish and it will decrease linearly all the way to the top. Um, escape velocity is the velocity at which um, the force actor stops applying forces to an object. So we can leave this set to its default of 10,000. It uh, basically says that if anything in the force actor reaches a velocity of 10,000, it's not going to apply any more forces on it until it slows down. Uh, our next parameter is the force radius. 
And this is how wide uh, or how big around our force is going to be at its bottom. And uh, we're fine with a, with a width of 200 at the bottom, or a radius of 200, I should say. Uh, force top radius is the same thing, but for the top. And since we want to create something sort of like a tornado, we want this to be a little bit wider. So we'll go ahead and set this to 350. And you can see in your view window that uh, down here our, our shape, outlined in red, has changed to represent that we now have a larger radius at the top than the bottom. So next up is our force height. Um, this force height parameter tells it how big you want your force cylinder to be. And um, right now it's set to 200. We want something a little taller than that. So we'll go ahead and set it to 768. And you can see once again my uh, force actor has changed shapes in here uh, to represent that new height. But you can also see it's half of it is down below my world and half of it is in my world, which we don't really want. And we can adjust that with the height offset. We could also adjust that by dragging this up, but um, I, I prefer to adjust the height offset as you can that way you can leave your force actors down on the uh, plane of the floor. And so for the height offset, positive numbers will move uh, the bottom of your force actor up and negative numbers will move it down. And so we just want to do 768 divided by 2. And this is a really handy feature in UDK that if uh, you need simple equations like this, you can just type them in. And when you hit enter, UDK will automatically run those calculations for you. So by entering 768 divided by 2, we got a force height offset of 384. And as you can see now, my force actor um, starts uh, right on the floor, which is where we want it to be and we can then go down to our next parameter which is force active which we want to go ahead and check um, essentially this tells the game whether or not this force actor is going to be active uh, when the game starts up or not um, for us we will want that checked so that we can see the effects of our force actor you can turn force actors on and off using kismet um, but that's for another tutorial uh, for right now, we'll just leave it turned on. Uh, these next four control what the force applies to. And for the time being, the main one we want to worry with is force applied to rigid bodies, which is default checked true, which is good. That means it will affect our barrel that we've placed. Um, you can play around with these, and it's also good to give you an idea of what sorts of things force actors will apply forces to. And you'll note that pawns, or which is what UDK calls player characters, is not on this list. And that's because in their current setup, force actors do not apply forces to pawns or player characters, which is something to keep in mind when placing them or thinking about ways you can use them. So now we have our parameters set up. We can close this and we will build our level just to make sure that everything gets captured. Okay, and our build has completed, so we can go ahead and right click in our world and say play from here and you can see our barrel is getting picked up and spun around and then uh, tossed out after a while and we can poke it back in there and see if we can get it to get picked up again there it goes and gets spun around and thrown out and we have a very basic uh, force actor tornado that is interacting with our K actors and throwing them around and so you can play with the parameters of this and uh, see how it interacts with different things, give it some different statics to play around with, and um, that basically gives you the basic layout of how a force actor works. Uh, there are several other types of force actors that you can add by going into your content browser, actor classes, and you can see things like a line impulse actor or a radial force actor or a radial impulse actor. Um, these are all different types of force actors. They basically have a lot of the same parameters as our cylindrical force actor. The important thing to note is that impulse actors differ from force actors in that impulse actors apply a one-time force, whereas force actors apply a continual force while an object is uh, inside their bounds. And with that, that concludes our force actor tutorial. Thank you for watching this video.